Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I'm going to do something political because that is just the kind of crazy I am, I guess. And so I can't not do this because today is Wednesday. It is the 20th of January. It's Inauguration Day. and There's a new president and a new vice president, which is what I'm really excited about. The all the firsts that are happening today and as a woman who went to college for political science <laughs> i am so excited that there is a vice president that is a woman kamala harris i'm super 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 excited about that and the fact that she's a woman of color is also extremely extremely empowering and so thank you for being here at above life channel if you don't like politics stuff just stop watching it okay i'm sorry Everything I do is not going to be for you because it's my channel. I'm Bridget and it's nice to see you and welcome here. Today I got a cup of hope, drinking lots of coffee this morning. I'm super just, I'm just celebrating. I just feel good today. I did not schedule any client sessions or anything. I just wanted to be in the energy of the day. Mm -hmm. Surprising to me that it started the energy of the day. It started at 3 a.m. If you follow me on Bridget Inspired on Instagram, you know that I've got four dogs. And unfortunately, since the beginning of January, yeah, like almost three weeks now, they've been kind of sick, not feeling 100%. It's been kind of not fun. And so I have to listen and get up really early and let them outside in the middle of the night and stuff multiple times. It's been tiring, but it's getting better. It's getting better. As you know, if you're watching on Instagram, it's getting better. So that's good. And I was up at 3 a.m. letting the dogs out and I realized I was like, the first thing I thought when I went outside was, oh, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. I've never been excited for a Wednesday as, for as long as I can remember. <laughs> like Wednesday, yay, it's inauguration day. And so I felt good, hopeful, optimistic, positive, just for a change, you know, just for a change, a fresh start, a change, regardless of how you fall on the political spectrum, it just feels like a change. And that's, don't we need change? Especially we've been in the same kind of rut for a long time, it seems like, we need change. And so I just feel hopeful about that. And I was like, oh, it's Wednesday, yay. And then I went back in, got everybody settled down, went back to bed and couldn't sleep. Laid there for a minute or two, a few minutes, several minutes, okay, and had a conversation. Had a conversation. Now, <clears throat> I strongly dislike it when other psychics or mediums or channelers, this bothers me, okay? I have pet peeves, you guys. I can share them with you, right? We're cool like that. When other psychics or mediums present like, oh, I had this visitation. This spirit came to me. Like, it's a big surprise that they came to you. You're psychic after all, which means you're open, you're in tune, and you can receive. <laughs> so like, why are you so surprised? But the second thing about that really is the how it kind of feels like it's exclusive then, or it's elite. Like, you have to be really special to be chosen by a spirit to communicate with you. How special are you? No, gosh, no. Oh my God, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> Stop it with all that. <clears throat> it is very special when you get a visit, but you get a visit because you are open and everybody can get a visit. Everybody can be intuitive. Everybody can communicate intuitively. You just have to be connected through your intuition. It's not just external, it's internal, and that's how you connect. It's not that hard, it's just that our brains get in the way. And so it bothers me when, when there's this kind of aura of, oh, I'm so special. I got a visitation from this person and that person, and they only speak to me or, you know, it's kind of presents, not psychics don't really do that. They don't like show up on YouTube and be like, hey, and look how special I am. I, I'm channeling this person. Well, maybe they kind of are because there's brands actually built on that. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Above Life Channel isn't intended that way. Just so you know, if you watch the videos, you know that I'm like, hey, hey, I'm doing this so that you know that you can do this too. <laughs> okay, it's not that complicated. <clears throat> okay, getting off my soapbox now. Oh, I'm so political today. And I'm really not too concerned about ruffling people's feathers. 
because those aren't my people. Those are not my people. If you're watching to hate watch, that's just ridiculous. Go watch a, a soap opera or a drama or something. <laughs> mm. Anyway, anyway, <sighs> off topic, back on topic. So I'm having this conversation with Bo Biden. So the president of the United States, Joe Biden, as you well know, part of his story, he's had a lot of tragedy. He has a lot of afterlife family. His wife, his first wife, his, his daughter, his, his um, it feels like a brother too, actually. It feels like there's a brother out there. It feels like there might be a mom. It feels like there's a, a, somebody that was like a mom too. So there's two old ladies. And then at least he has a big family, it looks like, in the afterlife. And his son, his beloved son, Bo, who I know was kind of political. I think he was a lawyer. I think he and Kamala Harris, the vice president, have a, a connection. And it feels very much like, yes, that's the case. And that's why, in part, that Joe, the president, President Biden, I'm gonna have to get used to that, President Biden, chose her because of that feeling. This, I feel like uh, the president is very intuitive and how can you not be when you have so much faith to keep going on and picking up and I feel just so much energy empathically around him because of all the trauma he suffered. I don't know how this man keeps going, honestly. It's like, and so politically, let me say to you, it's, it's obvious what my political persuasions are, and I've made that really clear. Um, I don't push that on any of you. So if you're watching and you feel like that's happening, then just stop watching because that means there's something that's being triggered for you. And, and I totally want you to have your own space. So, but obviously I don't make that secret at all. Of course not. And so, but you also know that I didn't support the current president, President Biden, for the nomination either. I did not support him. Mm -mm. And truth be told, I didn't support Kamala as my first choice either. She was actually, I think, my third choice. But, so I'm not, I'm not saying that I, I've always been this big fan. I'm this big fan. I was this big fan when he was a vice president. No, I'm not. I'm not a big fan. I'm just connecting with the energy around him as a person, as though he were, he's like a famous figure now, right? In history, I mean, a vice president would definitely be that. <clears throat> and now a president. And yet there's all this afterlife. And it actually, you guys, I have to tell you, it is inspiring me to channel this new fresh change, fresh start today, it's inspiring me to channel like I haven't before. Like there's hope. There's an energy of, there's a purpose and a meaning for all the death because death is a release. It's not an escape, it's a release. It's a, a, a huge like push of energy out so that there can be this real obvious view so there has to be a lot of empty seats at those holiday tables in order for people to wake up and realize that life really is precious. And unfortunately, we have been brought to this point as humanity on earth. Every single country, every, all the peoples, all of the peoples to see, yes, there are certain things that we have contributed to that have created this experience. And the point is, is to allow us to understand our individual impacts on our, through our lives, the individual impacts we have by living our lives. Boom, boom, like that. So the energy around this president is very empathic and all these dead people that he has cheering him on in the afterlife, he, the man cannot not be successful. He has a lot of help. Like it's like they've prepared. Everything that he's been through is preparing him for this time. And that's what his son told me last night, early in this morning, wee hours in the morning. And the only reason why I connected with Bo Biden, because I would have never thought, hey, I'm gonna channel his son because I feel like I'm like, oh, you know, people's kids, I don't care how old they are, like in this scenario, kind of feel, I mean, he died of a brain tumor. I think it was a, I think it was a brain tumor, brain cancer, that kind of thing, like horribly, right? Young and stuff. and. That's tragic, and and I don't want to um, like take any kind of advantage of anybody's trauma. N no way. And so, 
but oh my gosh, he's so proud of his dad. So Bo, come on in. Hey, he, he's so really easy to talk to. Come on in, have a seat. Hey, nice to see you. Very handsome, by the way. You guys, he's a good looking guy. You are a good looking guy. <laughs> he says, maybe in my, um, he says maybe in my afterlife. So what would you call this that you're in now as a spirit? My present life. He said, this is my present. And he's like, my dad, my dad often will say the gift, the gift. He says, um, he referred, he, when he talks about me, you got to listen. He said, you got to pay attention. When my dad talks about me, he talks about the gift, the gift, the gifts. And it's not just in, in, he's talking about me, but I'm the most recent experience he's had with grief. And so that's what he's relating to. That's what he's drawing from. My dad is drawing on his strength from understanding loss. That is why he resonates with the people so much because of the loss through this health, I'm gonna say crisis. <clears throat> He's like, mm-hmm. Through this health, uh, health crisis, I'll say crisis, he's saying something else. Experience that we're all having, his dad is like well-equipped to really relate to people. He's relatable. Okay, okay, so you say that and I get that because he's empathic. You guys, this president is extremely empathic. <clears throat> oh my goodness. <laughs> Woo, I am so feeling the vibes and I'm probably feeling it because I think right now he's probably getting sworn in and I want to be watching it and I'm not. I'm here, I'm talking to you and you need to be there. But spirit can be in multiple places at the same time, you guys. They're like rays of the sun. The sun isn't one source in the sky. There's multiple rays and they shine all over the earth, right? Yes. That's how a spirit is. Did you guys pay attention to that? That was me defining spirit for you. So you can ask, so you don't have to keep, you don't have to keep worrying about, well, if grandpa's with me, how, where, why, where, why isn't he with grandma in heaven? You know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Legitimate questions, by the way. It is cold in here. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, chilly. All right, so very empathic. Your dad is such an empath, yes, he is. Mm -hmm. He's a self-made man, he says. He's a self-made man. He has a huge history, though. His whole life is devoted to public service. Like, he's a, po a career politician, which people usually are really turned off by. So why is your dad, like, different? How is your dad different? Tell me that. <clears throat> Tell me that. Mr. Biden. <laughs> I think dad has just a way about him. He's, he's kind and he could, be, he could be anybody's friend. He's the kind of person that will go to the store to pick up some milk and not come back until three hours later because he's chatting with people and meeting people and talking to people. This is before you know, the aspirations for public office or that kind of thing. That's just the personality he has. That's just, that's just the way he is. Like, he can befriend just about anybody. In fact, I don't know anybody that I have to... Oh. Sorry, you guys, it's cold in here, so it's making my nose a little stuffy here. <clears throat> if you don't like that on the mic, just don't watch this then. Okay. So... All right, get back to your dad. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your dad, talking about your dad. <clears throat> I'm just so excited. My energy's all over. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. He says, it, he said, it's ex an exciting time. That's just the type of person he is. He said, he's just, that's, he's authentic. He's real. He's like everybody's friend. I don't know somebody that would say he <clears throat> treated them horribly or was a jerk. Well, okay, so, so maybe you can answer this, Bo. Bo Biden we're talking to, current president, um, Joseph Biden's son, who's in the afterlife. Maybe you can answer this for me. Um, <clears throat> part of the reason why I didn't get behind your dad as my first, second, or third choice, <clears throat> I'm sorry to say that out loud to you, I don't want to offend you, but that's my choice, right? Like, uh, is because I thought he was too old school. Your dad's really old school. Not just old, I'm not, I'm not, not talking about his age, I'm talking about the type of politics and the, you know, I mean, not that he would call women honey or anything like that, but that he just, he just kind of seems like everybody's buddy. And I'm like, not sure how strong and assertive and he just kind of seems to want to keep the peace and keep everybody happy. And sometimes you, to make the right decisions, you're going to make people not happy. Like me here on Above Life Channel, when I made decisions 
for myself to not do channeling or to channel you, Bo Biden, because you know there's going to be people who are not going to be happy with me channeling you for lots of reasons, which is fine. People aren't happy for lots of reasons anyway. But <clears throat> I, I, help me understand that. Help me, help me understand how, how, talk, talk to me about that. Your dad's old school. Talk to me about that. I mean, he really is. And for, and I'm not, it's not like I'm a spring chicken here. Okay. I'm a, I'm a after 45, I'm between 45 and 50. Okay. Let's just say that. Obviously you probably can tell, but I, I think he's kind of old fashioned and I'm not sure that I like that. Like, that's why I didn't like choose him. Okay. For my first, second or third choice. But of course I'm also a Minnesotan. So, you know, Amy Klobuchar looked really great for me and same with Pete. Pete was like my favorite. Yay. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> which would not be a surprise to above life channel watchers, especially when you've watched all of my channeling with all of the afterlife guests that I've talked to. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the playlists. So, Bo, help me understand that, you know, help, help, help me know your dad a little different than that, right? Like, is he really progressive? Oh, he's like, oh, Bridget. He's like, Bridget, you misunderstand. Well, he said, okay, okay. Dad is a different breed. He can walk both, both sides. He can walk both sides of the aisle. He can. That's exactly what America needs right now is that, that ability to not see the line. There, it's just denial. It's either you sit here, you sit here. It's like bride side, groom side, it's okay. It's not, we're all here for the same ceremony, for the same purpose, for the higher purpose, the higher calling. And that's what, that's what dad, he says, dad's heart is, it, it beats for America. It, and that, that sounds really cheesy, Bo. But it's true, that's the thing, Bridget, you have to understand about my dad. It's true. He's cheesy. That's the part that you're calling old school, but he's cheesy. He loves America. He loves service. He is so dedicated and so devoted. And he wants everyone to, to see how great and, and unified and amazing, innovative, creative, progressive that we are as Americans. And as a country, there's so much potential. He's really, it's like, He's so proud and, and that you would understand that if you were his child, because while dad led by example and was honorable, he also gave us room, you know, room to grow, room to be ourselves. And, and it wasn't easy, especially in those early years. Yeah. Okay. So you and Hunter, your brother were injured horribly in that car accident that took your mom and your sister's life. And I can't even imagine what that would have been like for you as a little kid and for your dad trying to raise you. He had lots of help. He had lots of help. He's talking about his grandmother being really involved and how extended family people he says you have to understand that friends are family to my dad and to me and understanding that your family just grows with the friendships that you kindle with people and you come to have allies and people you can trust and work with and even if you disagree with them you can still work through things it's not a a scorecard in any sense, it's, it's just a, you know, it, it, it would be easy for my dad to be a victim or poor me, a, a, um, angry and, and, and distant. It would be easy for him to, to be other things if he was a different person, but not, not, not dad. He, it's almost as though he understood that the challenges he will go through and the understanding of how important family is in those early times that
would allow him to, in some ways, be prepared for this exact moment in time in leadership. It, it is those things that you go through as a person in your life that form you. The difficult times as much as the celebrations. They inform your character. They create opportunity and they close doors for you. And the pain and the grief could have overwhelmed him, overtaken him, and it never did. It didn't weaken him. It gave him a sense of grace, a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning and higher power and a belief in something greater and, and a dream like the American dream. And that sounds so, I understand from your perspective that probably sounds really corny and, and that's exactly who my dad is, exactly who he is. He, he epitomizes a character on a, 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 in a movie or on a, a television show, a feel good, a feel good show. That, that's my dad. That's really who he is. Okay, so Bo, you're awesome. This is great talking to you. And tell us then how he's going to be a commander in chief and how he's going to make tough decisions, what you think about that. And you mentioned your mom and sister are with you in the afterlife. Yes. Yes, he says. So for those of you who would have asked that, which I would have asked too, yes. And so I see a couple of names, you guys. Now, I don't know, like I said, I don't know all your family's names or anything like that. I'm not great with names anyway. I'm not great with names in person, by the way. So if I meet you and you tell me your name and I think your name is Tracy instead of Kim, and I call you Tracy, it's probably because you just feel like a Tracy to me. <laughs> Maybe that's your higher self name. So don't be offended, <laughs> okay? So I'm not good with names, you guys know that. But I have some feminine names that are coming in. I have Cynthia, Cynthia or Cindy. Um, I also, it could be a Sandy. It could be an S-A-N-D, a Sandra or Sandy. I think Cynthia or Cindy. Cynthia is what I see. And then I also see a Lisa. I'm not sure what that means. And um, I also see a baby, a little baby in the afterlife. So either um, a child that died in in utero, um, didn't make it to full term in a pregnancy, or or died shortly after um, birth, so young, like before walking. Okay. And I see, okay, so I see that. I want to share that with everybody. And I also want to, so tell us about like this commander in chief thing, like give me some reassurance that he's going to be able to make tough decisions and ruffle people's feathers. He says, so funny, he says, Kamala and I know each other. We, we are, were friends and she will make sure, she will keep him in line. And, and to be fair to her, she's going to get blamed for things at times that my dad is actually doing when it's his idea and he wants to do it, but she kind of takes the blame or the fall for it. So you just watch for that to happen is what he says. You just watch for that to happen because she's going to have his back. She's going to have his back just like I would have his back. I trust her, by the way. He says, I trust her. I trust Kamala very, very much with my dad. I think my dad, my dad is a lot tougher than people maybe see of him because he does, he's very nice, he's very cordial, he's very um, kind. And I think kindness sometimes is perceived as weakness, unfortunately. Unfortunately it is. As far as power goes, you can't be kind and be powerful, can you? How is that possible? That's exactly what America needs right now. That's exactly the kind of leader that that needs to be in the White House right now. And he is very, once he makes up his mind about something, once he's very decisive, he will take in all advice and information and, and the, 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 he's saying like, it's like data, the intel, the intelligence from people around him. And then he'll, he'll kind of go internal. Like, it's almost like you guys, she's showing me like having this quiet time with himself. It's almost like prayer or meditation. It's like, he's kind of internal. He kind of brings it in and then he'll kind of come out and then he'll have a, he'll have a stand. He'll have a solid connection to what decision needs to be made or what direction to go. And he leads in that way. He takes in the information 
then he kind of goes into you know this kind of processing and then when he comes out and takes a stand for it you don't all you're not going to see it, and you won't see he says you won't see the processing piece or the researching piece or you'll only see glimpses of the process so it might look disjointed and disconnected and it might look like sometimes he's trying he's trying to be firm and other times he's just kind of like a little more wishy-washy or laid back or not so firm but really it's because he's in different parts of his process if you know the process you would know which stage he's in taking in the information listening asking questions going within himself when he comes back out he has a he has a, a solid connection to the path the next steps the the way the the approach but he may ask a few additional clarifying questions etc you have to understand the process in order to see what state he, stage he's in and this is what leadership is it's not a Yes, no, I'm changing my mind every five minutes. It's not, it's not what you've come to see in television or in movies or in playing out in the news media in the drama of the last um, experiences we've seen with, with what leadership maybe is related to power. And that's not leadership, that's power grabbing. That's grabbing power and that's desperation for power and the need to control by... Um, presentation or image and my father is nothing like that he is authentic and what you see is real he doesn't he doesn't um, um, try to polish the edges and be all perfect before he talks to you as American people and you'll see that you'll see him and you'll see you'll see him think about things and you'll see him take in information you'll you'll see that if you watch it you'll see the process that he he goes by and i think you'd want that instead of an impulsive leader like with with the key with the keys to the nuclear codes you know we don't really want to live in that kind of a society do we really want to live in that kind of a world do we want to we've had some experience with that do we want to this is bo biden Right. Very good points. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there, I really need to go because I, I gotta, I want to watch this inauguration. It's a uh, plan upstairs. That's the first thing I did when I woke up was I turned on the PBS news hour and I want to hear it and the music was good and it felt lovely. And I'm just so excited for the first female VP and woman of color. Yes. The little girl in me is so happy dance. I could have been the president. The little girl in me that was in fourth grade that visited the state capitol and said, I want to work here. <laughs> I want to make a difference. And I am. Are you? Mm -hmm. Just by being you. Little Mr. Rogers like humble. <laughs> kind of laughs. Does your dad, I'm gonna ask before I leave this conversation, does your dad have visits with you? Yes, we talk all the time. We talk all the time. Mm -hmm. And were you on, is it true that he literally is, it's almost like my feeling of this is that he is doing, he is fulfilling almost your legacy, Bo. Is that why he's running for president? Yes, that's why he ran for president, yes, yes. I think I'm the one that pushed him over the edge to do it, to say yes, but it has been a dream of my dad's to serve and be in service for so long. You know, he ran for president previously and it just, the timing just wasn't right for him. And there were others that were more suited at the time to, to be president. And he loves, he loves to lead and to be in service. And this is just a perfect, culmination to his for his life and yes I think I I, I think it's safe to say that I've had something to do with it yes <laughs> and so are you advising him well that is that is um, confidential um, you need to have security clearance in order to be able to um, to be part of, of that, privy to those conversations. I might have to ask you, Mr. Bo Biden, in the future, if you don't mind coming back and visiting. I don't, he says, I don't mind coming back and visiting. There's a whole bunch of other things we could talk about with your family. I don't want to pry or get into gossipy stuff right now, but we could do that. 
um, if you were open to that. He so says, if it's for, you know, if it's the greatest, the greatest good or whatever, if it's for um, a purpose and meaning, if it supports the mission of unity, then, well, I, yeah, I'm open to discussing more with you. You could be our correspondent, <laughs> our insider. <laughs> All right, you guys. All right. Thank you so much for the conversation. It was great talking to you at three in the morning, too. We had a really emotional conversation. It was really sweet. Um, feeling really a connection myself to service, public service as well. I don't know if you guys know this, but I the first part of my career, so I, I've spoken a little bit on Fairy Grasshopper, my U vlogging channel on YouTube, Fairy Grasshopper, about my, my past experience, my career experience and such, and my education and all that. And I worked in pub the public sector. I worked for government for uh, 10 plus years and in organizational development and learning and staffing recruitment and selection and employee relations. And I, I feel that it does take a special kind of person to want to go to school, invest your time and lots of money and getting an education. And then instead of going into business, which you could very easily do and go into public service instead is definitely takes um, a special part of you to want to be in service like that. And so I don't think, I think that recently, especially with current events and such, this is Bridget, obviously speaking, not Bo Biden. I think that it's really um, confusing to some. I think that there's this perception that there's power in, and there's some people that might be in public service for power or for what's perceived as positional power. But positional power is just like the receptionist at the front desk that doesn't let you get in to see that CEO. That's what positional power is. Or when you call up the credit card company because you're upset about something on your bill and you have to go through five different people to get to somebody that can actually make a decision, there's positional power where people try to convince you that they have the power and kind of hold you back or keep you down. And so there are some people in any job, any career, working at the grocery store, working in the office space, especially it seems like with office, like my personal experience has been with like the front desk staff or the a personal assistant to the head honcho. That's where I've had my personal ugh, experiences with that. You know, it's not just gatekeepers. It's like, I have power and I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna create it. And so you do see some of that in the public service, but you see that everywhere. It's just really obvious right now with current events in government, you actually see people who are in it for money. They think it's money, but it's not really money. It's like the money comes from the fundraising that gives them this boost for power because then they can connect with more people through their marketing strategies and all that, which are business things that politicians use in order to be able to get out their message. Well, some people misuse this, these tools in a way that is manipulative. And as you see in political ads and things like that. And at the same time, there are, that is like a tiny little slice of it. Like there's this huge pie and that's like maybe one, not even like, I mean, it's such a small little, it's less than a full decimal point of people that actually are in it for that. And Everybody else is in it for the genuine feeling of, I wanna make a difference and I wanna help people and I'm gonna make a good living, a decent living, because that's why I chose working in government instead of running for public office because running for public office is crazy, you guys. Why would you do that? You make no money, it's extremely stressful. It's the why would you do that? Because your heart is in it, because you really believe in this dream and you wanna help people in such a profound way that you will just sacrifice family and everything and all your time and devote it to that purpose and cause and like more power to you if that's you. But I wanted to have like a balance in my life. So I decided to go into government service, public service in, in uh, HR, human resources. So, and then I left and went to the private sector for a while. And then I came back to the public sector because the private sector was way different. You make money, yeah, but it's not like, inspiring <laughs> it wasn't anyway my experiences but all right all right enough about me enough about me so this is bridget at 
above life channel on youtube i hope you've enjoyed this conversation in the afterlife my channeling sessions now in 2021 might be more casual than you're used to in the past but that's because things change times are changing my friends and let's roll with it let's change with it let's give a big cup of hope cheers to all of you to your inspired spirits i hope that we've inspired your spirit today regardless of your political persuasion and encouraged you to live your life because it's your life so live it as an example you be the light for yourself you through your living be the example okay just uh, just live your life it's your life after all so live it just live it hey i believe in you i'm going to tell you that today i believe in you i believe there's good in you i believe there is capacity in you I believe there's a lot of you that don't feel that way. So as a fellow empath, a feeler, a sensor, I feel you and I believe in you. Thanks for being here.